Um, this presentation started as a rant. And um, I've spent a lot of time with Automatic over the years talking to users, you know, going to events, especially events where they're not, they don't really know a lot about WordPress. And there is this utter panic that a lot of people have when they come up to you and are just in this fear that they're doing things absolutely wrong and that they need this web, this plugin is going to be the make or break of why their sites are amazing or not. Um, so I wrote this kind of to talk to those people and hopefully if you're a designer or a developer, you can kind of take some things from this to speak to some of your clients about. Um, but it kind of step, takes a step back from WordPress as well and, and, and also looks at it from a little bit of a non-tech angle because I think a lot of the problems with WordPress websites aren't about the technology, even though that's the most intimidating part to site owners. It's, it's really about what you're doing with your website. So let's go. Um, so first me, um, I've been using WordPress for about 11 years. Uh, I was living in Italy for 13 years until a few months ago. I just came back, so I'm from the Bay Area originally. Happy to be back. Um, but I started with a hand-coded website that was keeping my friends and family up to date. And then slowly that became a lot bigger, the Italian blogosphere. I actually have some friends who I met through the Italian blogosphere here who live here now. And um, this was my first site with, um, with WordPress, which I still use today. Um, I invented a little thing called World Nutella Day, which you might have heard of. If you haven't, that's fine too. But it took on its own life with a lot of bloggers at the time. And that was a lot of fun to push WordPress to different, you know, in terms of scaling and getting hits in one day. And then I have a site about, um, about technology and business, which is my background, because I wanted to kind of round things out. So I've been using WordPress for a really long time. Um, I've been in Automatic for almost seven years. So I've seen the company go from about 50 people to now about 515. <laughs> um, so I love WordPress, and I wanted to talk a little bit more about it. So preparing your site. Um, and that's why there's a lot of food pictures in here, is because that's, I like food and take a lot of photography. I want to talk a little bit about voice. And I think this is something that people, um, especially if you're writing a lot of content, obviously there are going to be some people here who just have a website. And voice is going to be important, but it's not something that you're reinforcing with every blog post that you're publishing. But voice, um, I think, is something that people get mystified by. And they, they want to be clever, and they want to have something that's unique. And what I want to talk about is that the voice is not like necessarily the words that you're writing specifically, and if you're using slang or not, or if you're cutesy, and you can say, hey, guys, or something like that. It's about the consistency of your passion coming through your content, right? Being consistent with what you believe in, whether or not that's being passionate about a chocolatey spread or, or your love for Italy or technology. I think that that's really important for people to really zero in on what is their passion in terms of their content. Because if you're writing something that's not in your passion or in your voice, that's when it goes off voice. That's when it feels off brand. That's when it feels off. Um, so voice is an aspect of that. It's super hard to teach, but I think it's something to remember when they're starting to plan content and they're thinking about what does this site want to represent? That is it representing their passion correctly. Um, but I want to spend a lot of time on conversion and purpose. So I even had a question. Um, I spoke at the San Jose meetup on Monday. I've just been getting around. Um, and one of the questions that I got was, what are your best practices or top tips to get a site from zero to thousands of visitors? And I love that question, I get a lot. <laughs> like, I mean, um, and I think that's what everyone, that's what everyone wants, or maybe that's what their clients are asking for. But I, I don't always think that that's the goal, right? I mean, first you have to step back and like, what is the purpose of the site? What is success for the site? Because I think that depending on who you are, depending on what your business is, like that is so wildly different. And that's why when you focus on just one thing, or when that person hears about a plugin, that they're like, I have to have this plugin, that becomes that success to them. So here, I want to talk a little bit about a few different types of conversion or purpose that a site might have, and, and also how to get those things through WordPress. So a few lighthearted things. 
the blog s who's been blogging for a really long time she's now a very popular author um, i think <laughs> specifically when it comes to blogging um, if you're blogging to make a million dollars you should probably switch to something more lucrative like i don't know a sex tape which could be good advice i think a lot of people start off with really ambitious goals about what they're trying to achieve they want to go from zero to 100 in a short time and we know now and we definitely know because of the long tail of the internet like those really fast i wouldn't call them one hit wonders but like that very fast acceleration just maybe isn't even possible anymore with you know like you're going to have to be consistent and build an audience over time um, so that's why i like to bring the question is our page views enough um, or even even are they even measure um, and I think that people like to spend a lot of time in their Google Analytics and looking at that and panic when they get page views or five people from India looking at their website and nothing else so this is just one more that I want to share um, page views of course I think are so tied to right now of like ads and AdSense right if we get more page views you get you get money a lot of the more serious site owners go away from these um, you know, they're going into more like sponsored content and things like that. So this says, in case you can't read it, I'm sorry. Um, I was the first person in website, first personal website to take advertising. Now it's why you start one. If you're doing it for fun, there's nothing to worry about. If you're looking to make an income, this is not a good way. So when you're designing a website, um, maybe you're optimizing to follow on social channels, right? This could be a measure of success. I'm not saying it's a great one. Personally, I think that your website is your biggest asset right now and as we are seeing on Twitter and Facebook those opportunities are being like squeezed as someone who's had a, a, a Facebook fan page for years I remember the days when you could direct message every person who liked your page you could send them a, literally a direct message announcing something at the very beginning and now you know like if you post something organically maybe 10 to 15 percent of your fans will actually see it so this could be something that but still the brand decides, or the site owner, that I want to follow on social channels, and I want that to be a measure of success for my site. So, you know, for example, here in the upper right corner, they show their social links pretty prominently. This is something called the social links menu that you can do in WordPress. Um, this is a one way, there's so many different plugins to do it. I'm gonna, when I mention a site or something that you can use to do this, there are obviously so many more um, alternatives to this and I'll talk about choosing a plugin later in the presentation but for example you could set this up through the jetpack social media icons one of the things that you can also do is in the lower right is setting your Twitter username so that anyone who shares your content will also append the via to anything that they share that could be a measure of purpose or conversion so um, subscriptions now Especially, I used to work in the VIP team, so working with brands like Quartz and Time and, and TechCrunch. And um, now this is a little old, but you know there was a time when everyone started their newsletter, right? Everyone has, you know, BuzzFeed has a newsletter. That is something that people are swinging back to email, right? We didn't think we'd get there, right? We, we went. Everyone thought email was dead, and now we're kind of swinging back to it as one of the few places where you have, like. A direct line to a person and no other advertising you know around that so maybe subscriptions are going to be important to your site um, and maybe that's following the site via email for example in the upper right I have subscriptions here um, you could subscribe via email via the jetpack subscribe Tim Ferriss he wants you to subscribe that so you know for him it, he wants people to subscribe to his podcast he's gonna make that a prominent measure of the website and getting people on that um, like I said the newsletter is something that's interesting you know here I have it in a few different parts of my website we're starting to see a lot of pop-ups now people some people hate pop-ups some people love them but the truth is for a lot of websites they convert people into subscribers right so there's a lot of different um, plugins that can do this for you MailChimp has their own plugin and that you can use some of them look pretty, some of them look terrible. <laughs> um, but again, if, if the person says, to me, success is getting someone as a newsletter subscriber because then I know I'm gonna have their email address, I'm gonna be able to get in contact with them later, I might be able to sell my products, et cetera. 
um, working with you. So if you are a consultant or something, one of the things that I immediately suggest people to do, and maybe it doesn't, it does seem obvious, but like if you have a services page or if you have a work with you page, like how to hire you, what exactly are you interested in and what kinds of opportunities you aren't interested in. I think LinkedIn tried to do this a long time ago with our profiles. I'm interested in this, I'm not interested. I don't think anyone reads those. <laughs> but on your website, you have an opportunity to, to really list out all the different ways to engage with you, what kinds of projects you're interested in doing. And um, that can be a super prominent. So maybe you're optimizing the website around getting someone to actually contact you and hire you for a job. Now, backing up back to page views, maybe a thousand page views could be roughly equivalent to one client inquiry, maybe not. So I think like when you start to back up and speak with the client or speak with the site owner about like what really is going to, to make you feel that your website is a success, like they have to be honest with themselves about what they're trying to optimize for. Um, if you're selling digital products, now I think this may be the easiest thing to optimize for. If you have a store, <laughs> you can tell if visitors are turning into dollars or not, if they're actually buying things. Um, but some people are selling courses, some people are selling you know, digital products like books, and that may be something that they optimize for. Sponsorship is another thing. I think this is definitely going a little bit out of style. I think that, um, like I said, sponsor content and, and advertising in general is just not really, I mean, I don't wanna talk about mediums news, but like, that's one of the things that they're saying is like the whole ad business is just something that's kind of outdated as a, as a goal. Um, so that's conversion. And those are, I mean, there are so many different options for conversion in terms of purpose of your website, but I think getting that person off that ledge of panic of like, for me, page views equals success is really a good place to start in terms of how do you design this website? How do you, how do you help them fix the problems with the website, whether or not it's they're not getting visitors or clients or whatever? So another way to help people with, um, especially if you're someone who has a lot of content, um, when I stumble on a site via, maybe someone shared some content, you know, like for example, my site is like 12 years old. I have 12 years of content in there. Like, it's overwhelming for somebody. They just stumble onto your site and maybe they like what you wrote or what you're sharing. Like it would be good for you to maybe give them a guide about where they can you know, get some information about you. Maybe you highlight some of your biggest posts. Maybe you're drawing a path through something if you had some experience that you wanna make sure that they step through. I think that categories and tags are useful but not the best way to guide people through your content. So about page, obviously, if you don't have an about page, then I think that that could be a big problem because you want to give a little bit about your story. Just give a few examples here, maybe too fast, but I actually have a lot of slides, so I'm trying to go a little faster. Um, but here's just a few examples. But I mean, you know, including uh, frequently asked questions and things like that is always good. Personally, you know, I have like a product review and samples because I get offers for things and I just, Make sure to link back I'll get it, as long as you know I don't, I'm not writing about it. <laughs> um, more examples. Related content. Uh, this, so this is another way to also get people deeper into your site. And uh, there are several plugins that do related content. One, Jetpack does it, and um, we do it for free, which is pretty cool, because one of the things that a lot of the hosting providers complain about when you do related content is the indexing. So they have to index all the content and relate it to each other, and that takes up a lot of CPU and RAM, and they don't like that. So it's nice when we can actually do that for you. So this is an example of how you could do that in Jetpack-related posts, but there are definitely alternatives to that. So when someone finishes reading something that they like, they may be able to dive deeper into the content. Um, I wanna talk a little bit about themes, because I also think Themes are so, it's so emotional. Um, and this is something as a marketer and especially like dealing with WordPress and I've had friends who've been using WordPress for 10 years and they don't like their website, but they're afraid to change because everything works and they don't wanna break anything. 
Um, or someone who sees someone beautiful website and they get so attached to the design that they have to have that website, they have to have that design. If they can't get that design working, they're crushed, right? Um, I think the reality is probably somewhere in between where, where like you need something, you need a theme that'll get you most of the way there. And hopefully if they're thinking about conversion and purpose and that they have the, the things in the right place that you know they can kind of be a little happier with how the site actually looks. And this is more for people who don't have budgets for like completely custom design themes, because I think a lot of people have unrealistic expectations about what that might cost, about how much they like, you know, how much they're, work they're willing to put into it. So I just want to talk a little bit about theme inspiration. This won't be very inspiring at the beginning, but Matt had a good quote: "An ugly blog with incredible content will win over a beautiful blog with crappy content." And actually, I really, I really do believe that because I think that if you spend too much time worrying about design, unless you're a photographer or someone like your, your images are your content, um, then you're kind of getting lost. So WordPress's default theme, we know it used to look like this, ugly, right? Kubrick, and then uh, shortly we started to introduce default themes, 2012, 2014, 2015, this is 2017, if you haven't seen it, that just came out in 4.7 in December. Um, something really cool about this that I'm happy that I got to work on because we started it as a project in Automatic was um, providing support for video headers. So now you can have a video header um, in core for a, core, for a theme. So not everyone likes video headers, but it is nice <laughs> to know that we can offer that as part of core WordPress. Um, so the theme directory, I feel, I know I'm preaching a little bit to the choir, but it's hard for me to know how familiar everybody is. So I thought I'd be a little more thorough than, than usual, but the theme directory is always a great place to start. Um, we also have a lot of themes on wordpress.com. The good thing about all the themes that we have on .com, they're actually available for download regardless. So you can actually get any theme that is on .com and download it. Um, I usually suggest that people start with the commercial part of the theme directory if they want to buy something. And the reason why, and this, this page is uh, randomized, so you're always going to see a different order. Of, so feel free to scroll through it <laughs> and not just take any of the, the first ones. But the good thing is that all the people that are listed here have agreed to like the basic tenets of you know, WordPress software, providing the right amount of support, and also making sure that they obey the license, which is always just a good thing because you don't want someone to, to just Google a theme. And I think a lot of people are doing that. They're just like Googling or they're following a, a link and then maybe getting stuck with someone who doesn't keep the theme updated. So that's always a good place to start. But I'm not a developer. Okay, some of you are. <laughs> but um, if you're not a developer, I don't, I don't think you're lost and I don't think you need a developer. Again, it's, it's about your expectations. Like for example, let's look at 2015, which um, now with the customizer, that, you know, this is a little bit of an old screenshot here, you can go in and actually do some manipulation of, um, and I know this is, this is all gonna change. If you guys, did everyone see the state of the word at WordCamp US? Maybe not, but if you didn't, Matt said that there are going to be three focuses for this upcoming year for WordPress. One of those is going to be the customizer and how people customize their websites. So hopefully ra radically changing that and making it different, more interesting. Um, but that's going to be one of the things that will change. But at least for now, we've abstracted some of those things so people can actually change colors and backgrounds themselves. So quickly, you can make 2015 look rap, you know, different from itself in terms of colors and, and things like that. Um, Coraline, collinear actually is what they're calling it now. This is a theme that just with a, a little bit of, you know, background colors and, and a, a bit of a, you know, like their logo and um, like a little bit of custom, like not a really any custom design. These are all on .com, so you know they're not doing completely custom design. They've made it look really different. So especially if you're a developer who's not a designer, maybe you can start to look at some of these themes which offer some you know, like flexibility for the, for the user as well. Something that I have like dear to heart because it was like my first WordCamp speech in like 2010 is when they, um, and at the time it was, I think it had just been introduced into core. Um, and featured images are a really cool thing. 
I think that you should be setting them regardless because when you change themes, then you can still kind of see how that, that content will look. Um, it's in the, the editor, everyone probably knows where that is. Here's another example. It makes category pages look cool as well in terms of archives. Um, site icon, so again, I'm just trying to show you some different ways to, these are all non-tech ways that we can, we can customize WordPress that you, and you don't, need, um, you don't need a plugin to do that. Site icon was added pretty recently and you can do that in the customizer like I did here and an extra cool thing is that you can actually click on, while you have it open in the browser on your phone, you can click on add to home screen and it'll add like a little shortcut on your phone which is kind of cool. It doesn't make people feel like they have an app, but it does make it feel a little bit closer that they can <laughs> click on something that they own. Um, tile galleries is something, uh, I don't know if anyone remembers like NextGen. Who remembers NextGen? Okay. Um, nothing against them, but it was a time, you know, like WordPress used to handle media very badly and, and displaying, and it's cool that now we can, we can do things a little more exciting. This is through Jetpack, but you can, you can do with tons of plugins, they're able to manipulate a lot easier. Being mobile ready. So Google is our master when it comes to that. Um, and they give you, and probably everyone, who actually does this for their sites? Hoping everyone, most people do, right? And now they, they've started to send you recap emails. They're starting to get into the email marketing, I, said, I noticed. They send you reminders. But it's a good um, chance to check and see how your site does. And you can put the URL in there, and it'll tell you if it's mobile friendly. It'll give you a little preview. And um, there's also, if, if you're using a theme that fails, you can start to look at like responsive as a filter in the WordPress.org filter, or sorry, theme repository for that. Um, Quickly, just talking about mobile apps. Again, these are all different ways that you can create content. The, the mobile apps have definitely gotten, in the past 12 months even, I would say they've gotten better. You can, you can actually preview images and dra you know, like insert them into the content. Um, and I know that team is hard at work. And actually, probably something that's not known is that that's, that's actually open source and it would be, it's something that anyone can help work on, but it's very difficult to get mobile developers to donate time. I think they all want to write their million dollar app instead of doing open source <laughs> software. But if you're a mobile developer and you're listening, they would love, your, they would love some uh, additional love. Um, just going to touch really briefly on security backup. Um, there are a lot of ways to do it better. I, I actually wrote the security white paper, if you've ever seen that on wordpress.org, there if you go to, to about security and there's a free white paper on there that we wrote explaining um, and that's also downloadable as a PDF that you can share with clients and you can, um, it's been translated as well, I don't know if you speak a different language, but we're open to people donating uh, translations as well. But that kind of explains more the core security of WordPress, it doesn't really get into plugins and themes which unfortunately we know is where a lot of the danger is. <laughs> um, but if you want to start securing your, like these are things I just tell everybody, and um, using a strong password, keeping your, your version updated. Actually today, 4.7.1 got pushed automatically. If you don't have automatic updates turned on, please think twice <laughs> and turn them on. <laughs> um, you, if you're not using plugins and themes, usually I would, um, I, you know, definitely keep them updated, but if you're not really using them, I would just uninstall them so they're not on your server. Um, secure hosting environments, this is, I'm pretty sure I'm preaching the choir here, most of you guys know about this, but it's like, there's such a, uh, there's such a range of secure that you can offer, and even, even some of the shared hosting will give you extra check boxes to, to further secure it, so I think that's something also, it's hard for end users to, to worry about because they just want to write content and they just want to publish things. But it's, if you're helping someone, it's always good to check and see if, if the hosting provider offers something for free, even and as a way to you know um, further secure that. Yeah. So additional protection and security. Um, Vault Press is something that we use that is available. There are many other plugins out there that that do security. One of the things that that VaultPress does is push hot fixes when they identify vulnerabilities and they give you backups as well. Um, 
But if you search in the plugin directory for backup, there are a ton. Um, and you're probably familiar with it, but again, exporting your content from WordPress as a as like a regular backup process only like skips all the, the theme files and things like that. So it's definitely good to use some sort of plugin that does all, everything. Otherwise, you're going to be missing out. This is my favorite word, SEO, probably, but I don't like it. I just, yeah, um, this is, I think this is kind of where this, we're kind of full circle in this presentation now. They're like, usually the plugin that people are telling me that they need, that their site is not going to be popular or successful without is an SEO plugin. And they've been told by someone else because they need this SEO plugin so much. Um, I think that, and I know Yoast, and I love him, and, and, and I think, and he's agreed with me, we actually had this conversation where like, there are some power users in the world that need everything his plugin offers. And WordPress does a lot out of the box for a lot of people, and a lot of the best SEO things probably have nothing to do with the plugin setting. And, um, and I like this little picture of Google. Um, they use more than like 200, oh, you can barely see it, sorry. You don't need to know all the content anyway. It's not, it's not even a, like a fraction of what they say, but let me, let me read some of these. So this is how Google ranks search engine results. They use more than 200 signals to determine it. And if, if you've ever followed PageRank, like they've actually taken that away, right? And we can't see what PageRank is anymore of websites. They don't want you to know how powerful your site is. Um, so they might look at things like freshness of content, the number of other websites linking to you, the words on the web page, quality of the you know personalization, um, et cetera. Yeah, it's going to be. I think my bad. I just picked the wrong the wrong synonyms or your keywords. And like one thing that's not even here is like how many other people are writing about the same thing that you're writing about, and how long? How many of them have been doing it longer? How many of them have you know more links than you do? How many of them have more authority? And that's that's the depressing sad reality that's hard to explain to new site owners is that it's going to take time. The more consistent you are and the more unique your content is and the more people find it and share it and link to it, that's going to increase your chances of showing up if, if you're not putting any money towards it. I mean, we know you can show up and add results you know, with a little money, and anybody can, but that's not pure SEO. That's SEM, right? So. It's, it's really hard for me that, I mean, I know this is something that we, we depend on Google quite a bit for, um, and it's, uh, there are a few things that a plugin can do for you that can help, but we know, like just like we used to do, meta descriptions, things like that, that they may be ignoring those completely, and how much time do you spend putting in that information? So I have six non-plugin non SEO tips. <laughs> um, so first of all, as you can set the pretty permalinks, like this used to be something you, that wasn't easily done in, in WordPress, like, or at least like you had to make sure you did it. Everyone's pretty much doing this now, so that's easy. But if you ever see a site with like question mark P equals something, and I have actually, I recently, I feel like in the last week or two, I did see one, and I was like, okay, someone needs to set their permalinks for them. But it's not very common anymore. Um, use descriptive titles for posts and pages. This seems like such a no-brainer. Uh, as someone who started blogging early, it wasn't. At the beginning, you were like, like cutesy, maybe you just like put something like, what a fun day, it's like the title, but like really you were like writing a recipe for something. So um, being descriptive in the about the content that, that people are actually going to be reading once they click is, is helpful. Keep like post slugs here succinct. There isn't a ton of proof around that in terms of like a really long one versus a short one, but I think it will be easier to remember and for people to, to read it as well. Um, alt text your images. This is also one that probably by now feels wrote to you, especially if you use Pinterest. Um, you know, you got to put that alt text in there so that when someone pins an image that you have, it's going to pop up and give it the right, you know, and maybe that in the, in the alt text you have your site name as well because that may get lost. Um, one thing that I actually really like is Making sure that, uh, especially like when I have a site that's like 12 years old, like I gotta make sure I link back to my own stuff because you never know who is showing up on which page and like again, like if they're gonna take the time to even go back and look at things. So even though I've talked about Puglia, like for 
seven years, I gotta make sure to link to that category page or make sure to give people who are reading that content for the first time or my site for the first time a way to like go back and get more. <laughs> That's not worth the picture. Um, and of course, using Google Webmaster Tools is helpful to look for errors, and, um, and that's something free, and that's not something you need to plug in for. Um, two bonus, non-plugin SEO tips, which I kind of already talked about, which is like write often and write well. Um, and I think that also has to do with like being unique in terms of, and when I say unique, I mean like if you want to write about hotel websites, like the more specific you are, maybe, maybe that's SOMA, websites where you're, you're specifically talking about a neighborhood or um, I think that's a super big frustration for people who who start a site and they go oh, yeah I'm not showing up for hotels in Google and it's like <laughs> if you're not going to for a while I mean and it's just not the way that's, that Google search works and how they get discovered um, and and I find that a lot of these like really like one of my I think my one of my most popular posts is like how to make hot pepper chili oil and like not many people are blogging about that, which is why that like, is important. Com you know, so I think the more unique you can be is better. Um, just a quick little note about choosing WordPress plugins. You guys probably really know a lot of this, but in the plugin directory, just want to pull out a few tips that maybe you can help. Is, um, let's see. So I tend to look at ratings of average and volume. So I mean, I know these are non, like, pretty common sense, but they're always good to like, if someone's asking you, how do you pick a plugin, this is what I tell them. Um, so how many people have actually voted for it? And you know, if you see 200 stars on something or, or five on something, I tend to see, um, take that into account. How many active installs? This is actually really helpful and it's been something really cool to see in the past couple years that didn't used to be available. Um, the quality of their documentation, they have a chance to really wow you here and tell you how to install something and actually like some of them have videos that walk you through something. So I think that's always showing what kind of investment they're making into the plugin itself. The last time it was updated is really helpful and actually the last updated for themes is helpful too because um, I think themes are actually more at risk to be outdated when they don't you know, update with the, the latest release and the compatible up to. If you're following along in core development, pretty much everybody knows when a release is coming. And if they haven't had time to test up to that, it's probably just because they're not prioritizing it, and that could be a bad sign. So um, choose as much as, choose in the repository. Again, they're agreeing to the tenants. Um, this is another plus is that in most cases, the WordPress security team has like a direct contact to them. So if they get a bug or something that's really um, severe that's reported, often they may reach out to them to either have them fix it or pr help them with it. And um, again, they're not, op they're not required to provide support. So last but not least, WordPress community. Um, it would be really cool if beyond the meetup, again, Shannon needs help. Um, you know, like maybe it's suggesting a topic or helping to find a speaker beyond um, the meetups, there's, there's WordCamps. I've been um, an, on the organizing team for WordCamp Europe for the past couple years. And um, if you have a little time to give back, it's really cool to, to meet other people and maybe, or maybe be a speaker. I, I'm pretty sure a lot of the people in the audience here tonight could be up here. And I think um, that would be really great to take that leap because it, first of all, it's not fun to stand up here <laughs> and pretend you're the expert in everything. I think it's good if we, if we kind of exchange with each other and our knowledge and stuff. So um, yeah, so you can go to WordCamp Central, see what's coming up. Hopefully we'll have one in the Bay Area at some point. Um, otherwise, you've already seen the meetups. So I would just say give it a try or give back. Yeah, anyway, that's it.